All right, so in this problem, I have 500 squared minus 499 squared. So I actually have two methods to solve this problem. So for method one, I'll first start by rewriting this, 500 squared minus 499 squared. And well, first off, I'm going to rewrite 500 squared. So 500 squared, this is the same thing as 499 plus 1 squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 499 and b equals 1. So this turns into 499 squared plus 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared. And now this is equal to 499 squared plus 998 plus 1. And remember, at the end here, I have negative 499 squared. So now we can add that back in. And 499 squared minus 499 squared, these two cancel out. So I'm left with 998 plus 1. And this is equal to 999. So that is the first method of solving this problem. Now for method 2, I'm going to rewrite our problem. 500 squared minus 499 squared. And now this time, in last time we wrote, rewrote 500 squared, right? This time I'm gonna rewrite 499 squared. So 499 squared is the same thing as 500 minus one squared. And if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 500 and b is 1. So this is going to turn into 500 squared minus 2 times 500 plus, sorry, minus 2 times 500 times 1 plus 1 squared. And this simplifies to 500 squared minus 1,000 plus 1. And now we can go back and replace 499 squared with this. So we get 500 squared minus 500 squared minus 1,000 plus one. And this is all in parentheses, by the way. So now this is equal to 500 squared and now we're going to distribute the negative sign. So if I distribute the negative sign, that's basically like multiplying these terms by negative 1. So negative 1 times 500 squared is negative 500 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1,000 is positive 1,000. And negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Now these two 500 squares cancel out. So I'll be left with 1,000 minus 1. And 1,000 minus 1 is 999. So again, I get 999 as my answer. 
All right, so in this problem, I have three to the power of x is equal to 80. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I first start with three to the power of x is equal to 80. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I get log three to the power of X is equal to log 80. Now we want to find a way to, we want to find the value of X, right? And to get X, it's hard to do it when it's in exponent form. So we want to find a way to bring X down to make it a real term. And to do that, there is an important property of logarithms that states that if there's something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 3 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 3 is equal to log 80. Now from here, I'm going to rewrite 80 here as 8 times 10. And if I have something in the form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. And this is another one of the exponent or sorry logarithmic properties there is also log a over b and if i have something in this form this is the same thing as log a minus log b so now going back to the problem we have log 8 times 10 and we can use this property so we can think of 8 as a and 10 as b so this is going to equal x log 3 is equal to log of 8 plus log of 10. Now, if you guys already didn't know, log 10 is simply equal to 1. So I get x times log 3 is equal to log 8 plus log 10, or sorry, just 1. And now remember, we want to isolate x, so the only thing left to do is to get rid of this log 3 by dividing both sides by log 3. So then this cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 8 plus 1 over log 3. Now, log 8 is equal to 0 0.90309, and log 3 is equal to 0 0.4771. So this is going to equal 0 0.90309 plus 1 over 0 0.4771. And this is equal to 1.90309 over 0 0.4771. Now, 1.90309 over 0 0.4771 is equal to 3.9888. So x is equal to 3.9889. Now, the only thing left to do is to check if my solution here is correct. So the original equation was right here, 3 to the power of x is equal to 80. 
and my solution is x is equal to 3.9889. So if I plug this in for x into my original equation, I get 3 to the power of 3.9889 is equal to 80. Now 3.9889 is really close to 4, right? So let's first find the value of 3 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 is the same thing as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is the same thing as 9 times 9, which is equal to 81. Now 3.9889 is a little less than 4, meaning we can estimate that it's going to be around 1 less than 81. So it's safe to say that 3 to the power of 39889, sorry, 3 to the power of 3.9889 is close to the value of 80.